Well, hello and welcome to Business 360. I'm Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Markets attempt a recovery after an early fall, but it's not enough to break into positive territory. Nifty and Sensex slip around half a percent each. As almost every sector comes under heavy pressure, Nifty Bank ends over 1% lower. Bitcoin starts 2024 with a bang, hits a 21-month peak of $45,000 ahead of potential ETF approval from the American regulator. Analysts give bold price predictions for the cryptocurrency this year. Predictions range from $60,000 to $500,000 mark. The government tweaks the auto PLI scheme partially, extends its tenure by a year. The incentive scheme will now be applicable for a total of five years till FY28. The centre also says that if a company fails to achieve the determined sales value for any year, it will not receive any incentive for that year. Can receive incentives next year if it meets the threshold criteria. The Supreme Court seeks details from the centre on railway safety measures. A PIL alleges that Kavach, the automatic train protection system, has not been deployed yet. The court asks the centre to respond to the allegations directs for clarity on the status of Kavach. Petrol pumps across several parts of the country run out of fuel as truckers continue their protests for the second day. They are protesting against the 10-year jail term for hit-and-run offences under the revised criminal law. Truckers claim that provision will prove draconian and discourage people from choosing trucking as a profession. At least 48 persons confirmed dead in Japan and several injured after a major earthquake hits Ishikawa Prefecture. Powerful aftershocks caused deep cracks in roads, buildings collapse and fires. Prime Minister Fumi Kishida says it's a race against time to rescue the victims. In another tragic event, a Japan Airlines plane catches fire at the runway of Tokyo Haneda Airport. As per reports, the plane with over 300 passengers on board went up in flames after colliding with the Japanese Coast Guard aircraft during landing. All passengers and crew have reportedly been safely evacuated. Israel announces it will scale down military presence in Gaza, indicating a shift towards a lower intensity phase of war. However, it plans to continue the fight throughout 2024. Hamas continues relentless firing at at least 12 rockets from Gaza. Israel's Supreme Court strikes down a controversial government plan to limit the powers of the judiciary. India's External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar says Canadian politics have given space to Khalistani forces, adds that it also allowed them to indulge in activities that directly impacted Indo-Canadian bilateral ties. Well, first, after the day's uh, trading action, the day's uh, market action, in fact, it was a day of profit-taking after the Lal Street ended in the red, but off the day's lows. Nifty managed to hold on to the 21,600 marks. Sensex, meanwhile, fell over 350 points, while Nifty lost about 70 points. But bank stocks remain the biggest laggards, with the index falling over 1%. Pharma stocks were the outperformers, meanwhile, after they saw buying uh, in a volatile market. That index hit record highs in today's trading session. And for more on that, Surbhi Padhya is joining us now with a quick wrap of the day's market action. Surbhi, over to you. Well, it was a day of correction that swept in and it was across the board, across the market really. The only difference was that while the Nifty and the Midcap Index managed to see a bit of a recovery, for the banks it was quite a down and out day. And I'll, I'll get to more details in just a bit. Intraday, the Nifty had actually fallen to a level of 21,555 thereabouts. And from there, there was a smart recovery coming in. But as I'm saying, the whole problem in this market is the banking space, large cap banks. I mean, they're not getting any sustained buying. And forget buying, today was a day of a very clear, a very precise selling that came in. Though, of course, we have to keep in mind uh, that uh, volumes are still thin. That's the one caveat which one must place on board. So banking is uh, the one problem area, 1% down on the bank nifty today at the lowest levels. That's where that index closed out. And the other trend was the sustained profit taking in autos because the December sales numbers have not been good. Pretty, you know, uh, dismal across the board, one can say that. So where was the support in the market? 
pharma had a good trending obsession. Both large caps and mid cap pharma stocks did pretty well. And then there was Reliance that was doing some heavy lifting, some firefighting. Along with Reliance, actually, two more stocks deserve a mention. One is Coal India. Good December update coming in. Uh, the offtake and the production numbers there were well received by the market. And also Bajaj Finance. It seems some money moving out of banks and perhaps making its way to a big NBFC like this one. Uh, speaking of mid caps, the one trend that was quite apparent today was the buy on dips playing out in PSUs. So it wasn't just Coal India. Other names like uh, NMDC or Nalco or even some of the PSU banks like Bank of India, Central Bank, etc. Most of them managed to find some traction from the lowest levels of the day. Uh, mid caps. Now that's where the action in the market seems to be very, very clearly evident and very focused. Here, uh, a couple of names really stood out today. Zomato, for instance, which is uh, levying a higher platform fee. That stock uh, was up in about 3-4%. Lemon Tree, which has been uh, singled out as uh, perhaps the stock of 2024 by Motilal Oswal, one of their top bets. That stock had a great flying session, 10-11% higher. And then there were some other names like Subros that did well. VST Industries because of some block trades that happened. So fair amount of action in the mid cap space, but we have to watch with the banks and the larger correction, uh, whether indeed uh, the level of 21,600 thereabouts can serve as a floor for this market. Right, so be thanks a lot for that. Now, meanwhile, oil prices rose after the Iran dispatched a warship to the Red Sea in retaliation to the U.S. attack on Houthi boats. The situation in the Red Sea route remains tense after attacks by Yemen's Houthi rebels. Remember, this move comes after the U.S. Navy destroyed three boats of Iran-backed Houthi rebels killing 10 militants. Meanwhile, the government has hiked windfall gains uh, fall tax on domestic crude oil prices from 1300 rupees per tonne to 23 rupees per tonne. Windfall taxes on aviation turbine fuel and diesel has been removed. The windfall tax on petrol continues to remain nil. And China's manufacturing activity, as per a private survey, picked up in December. In contrast to the government uh, data, as per the Kayaksin survey, China's Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index expanded to 50.8 in December from 50.7 in November. This was the quickest pace of expansion since May of last year. However, the data from country's National Statistics Bureau released on Sunday highlighted a contradiction in manufacturing activity. And Bitcoin, importantly, has started 2024 with a bang. The cryptocurrency hit a 21-month peak of $45,000 ahead of a potential ETF approval from the American regulator. Analysts have given bold predictions for the cryptocurrency this year. Manisha Gupta joining us now with more details. Manisha, a great start for Bitcoin. What are analysts saying? What price band will this cryptocurrency sit in going ahead for 2024? Oh, well, yes, after a very strong rebound in 2023, this year has started on a stronger note for cryptocurrencies where we are looking at Bitcoin now crossing above $45,000. It's trading at the highest since April 2022 and the markets do believe that you could be looking at higher gains from here. Actually, when you look at the last 24 hours itself, Bitcoin is gained up by 6%, Ether is up 4%. These are those cryptocurrencies which are traded in higher volumes and have the highest market capital as well. Solana and Avalanche have gained up by 9% in last 24 hours. The reason that you are looking at gains is, one, there's a strong anticipation that the US SEC will approve the spot Bitcoin ETFs. There are some three or four applications on that already. The second reason is the Bitcoin halving which is going to happen in April 2024. Every time you see a Bitcoin halving happen which happens every four years there is a strong run-up rally that we see in Bitcoin and the markets are anticipating this could happen this time too. The other reason is the institutional interest. So there is money flowing into cryptocurrencies given the fact that we are looking at weaker economic data. The currencies also have seen a pressure and that interest really seems to be coming in for this one. The outlook for 2024 for Bitcoin continues to be quite strong. Mark Mobius in a recent interview to CNBC has said that they are expecting $60,000 to come back in case of Bitcoin in this year. And then you have 75000 to 80000 to 100000 kind of levels coming in from various companies like Bitmining, Nexo, Stanchart is talking about 100000 And the most bullish of outlook for Bitcoin comes in from CoinFund at $500,000 coming in for this year itself. Right, Manisha, thank you so much for that. Quite clearly an exciting year ahead for cryptos. Uh, but the United States Food and Drug Administration has issued five observations to Torrent Pharma for its Chhatral unit in Gujarat. In a letter accessed by CNBC TV 18, the US FDA has observed that the plant has failed to review any unexplained discrepancies 
The authority also observed that equipment were not cleaned and maintained at appropriate intervals and that accuracy and specificity of test methods were not established. And speaking of the United States Food and Drug Administration, sources have told CNBC TV 18 that Sarah McMullen, the India head of the organization, is set to transition out by the middle of this year and will move to China as a country director. Well, moving to the auto space now, the government has partially tweaked the auto PLI scheme, extending its tenure by a year till FY28. Also, according to the amended rules, an eligible company will not get incentives if it fails to achieve the determined sales value for that year. However, it can receive incentives next year if it meets the threshold criteria. Parikshit Lutra joining us now with more details. Parikshit, how is the auto industry looking at these developments? Well, uh, this will come as a major relief for the auto industry because uh, the scheme was applicable from FY23 to FY27. Now, in the first year of uh, the scheme, uh, most of the companies could not qualify for incentives or they could not receive certification from the ARAI. One, because of the stringent criteria and also because of the lack of clarity around domestic value addition and how to meet that. So, because that clarity took about uh, 8 to 12 months, uh, many companies were concerned about losing one year of incentives. Now, keeping in uh, mind those concerns, the Ministry of Heavy Industries, which is the nodal body for the auto industry, has extended the tenure of the scheme by one year to uh, 2028, to FY28. So the disbursements will begin from, nest, uh, from uh, next fiscal onwards, that is FY25, uh, and all the companies which have missed out on incentives so far will get it. So as far as the incentives go, for the first year, that is for FI24, it's only about 604 crores as an outlay uh, in total because a uh, fewer number of companies have uh, qualified and it increases uh, gradually to about 9,500 crores in the last fiscal because uh, the government believes that all the criteria, all the companies will be able to meet the eligibility criteria. Even if one company is not able to meet uh, the threshold for increased sales value in the first year, they will not get incentives in that year, but next year, if they qualify for the increased threshold, they will be eligible to get incentives. So a whole lot of amendments have been made to make it easier for the companies to uh, receive incentives under the PLI scheme. Right, Parikshit, thanks a lot for that. Now, the Nifty Auto Index, along with all its constituents, were in the red today after most automobile makers reported softer sales figures for the month of December. Aisha Motors led this decline as Royal Enfield sales slipped 7% on a year-on-year -year basis. Meanwhile, Ashok Leyland's stock also saw red after the auto major sales fell for the second straight month. Similarly, shares of TVS also clocked losses despite a 25% growth in overall sales for the month of December. An online travel platform, Ease My Trip Board, has approved a proposal to raise 1,000 crore rupees. The fundraise would be via a combination of preferential issue of equity shares along with warrants. And Vodafone Idea has issued a clarification saying that the company was not in talks with Elon Musk's Starlink. This after reports claim that the government could sell its 33% stake in Vodafone Idea to Elon Musk. The stock had risen nearly 30% in two trading sessions. However, it fell in today's trade after the clarification. Meanwhile, fair trade regulator CCI has said that the exports of iron ore should be discouraged. In a market study on the sector, the competition watchdog recommended the government must encourage the domestic production of steel to control prices. The CCI study also found that the differential pricing of iron ore is likely to create competition concerns for the sector. And from some courtroom action now, the Supreme Court has written to the centre asking about the protective measures in place or proposed to be implemented to prevent train accidents in the country. This comes after a PIL was filed in the Apex Court flagging concerns over rail safety following a series of rail accidents across the country. The PIL has claimed that the government has approved the covered system for rail security, but the system has not been deployed yet. And 2023 would be remembered as the year of comeback for the old guards in the capital markets. Nimesh Shah is joining us now, is here with us to tell us more about their comeback trajectory. Nimesh. 
2023 witnessed a surprising comeback for the old guards in the capital markets. The CK Birla Group, RPG Enterprises and TBS Motors defied expectations, outpacing the industry titans, the likes of Adani's Reliance and Birla Group in terms of market cap. CK Birla Group uh, led the charge with a remarkable 72% surge in market cap, closely followed by the likes of RPG Enterprises and the TBS Group. However, in absolute terms, the Tata Group tops the chart once again, adding nearly 6 lakh crores in market cap only in 2023. So let's look at the big contributors among the winners in 2023. The first is the CK Birla Group. In that group, Birla Soft and Orion Cement were the two big contributors. Birla Soft rallied nearly 150% and Orion Cement uh, rallied nearly 100%. So that, these were the two big contributors in that particular group. Now look at the next group, which is the uh, uh, RPG Group. In that group, the biggest contribution came from Zensa Technologies, RPG Life Science and Seat. Zensar itself rallied nearly 190% in 2023, followed by RPG Life, that stock rallied 60%, and Seat also rallied nearly 45%, adding close to 10,000 crores in market cap for that particular group. Now look at the TVS group. In that, in that group, the Bellwether TVS Motors was the biggest contributor. That stock rallied nearly 84% in 2023, added nearly 95,000 crores in market cap for that group, followed by Sundaram Finance. That stock rallied 51% and added close to 39,000 crores in market cap for TVS group. Now look at the RP, RP Sanjeev Goenka group. In that particular group, the biggest contribution came from First Source, that stock rallied 83%, and a small company PCBL, that also rallied nearly 97%, and added close to 9,600 crores in terms of market cap for that particular group. But as I said earlier, the biggest wealth uh, creation came in Tata group. In that group, uh, the two big contributors were TCS and Tata Motors. TCS added nearly 1.8 lakh crores in market cap in 2023, but the return was for Tata Motors. A big move in that stock in, in, in 2023, that company added nearly 1 lakh crores in market cap for, for, the, for the group in 2023. So as I said, 2023 was a year of return of the old guards in the capital markets. Well, with that, it's time now to slip into a very short break. But coming up, petrol pumps across several parts of the country run out of fuel as truckers continue their protest for the second day. They are protesting against the 10-year jail term for hate and run offences under the revised criminal law. Details when we come back. Welcome back. Now, here's the big international story this evening. At least 48 persons are confirmed dead in Japan and several injured after a major earthquake hit the Ishikawa prefecture in the country. Powerful aftershocks have caused deep cracks in roads, building collapses and triggered fires. In the Wajima city alone, authorities have reported that over 100 homes and buildings have been severely impacted with fires. According to Japan's Geospatial Information Authority, the earthquake has moved the land up 1.3 meters in this city. Rescue operations are on across Ishikawa. Around 1 lakh people across nine prefectures in Japan have been evacuated so far. However, local officials have said that efforts have been hindered by damaged roads, reducing accessibility, especially in remote areas. Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida has said that it's a race against time to rescue the victims. Meanwhile, several households remain without power and see disruptions in water supply. In another tragic event, a Japan Airlines plane has caught fire on the runway of Tokyo Haneda Airport. As per reports, the plane with over 360 passengers on board went up in flames after colliding with a Japanese Coast Guard aircraft during landing. All passengers and crew have reportedly been safely evacuated. Back home, the insurance sector went through some major ups and downs in 2023 as the year was all about regulatory changes and the industry's response to them. The insurance regulator's annual report summarizes these. Yash, uh, give us a sense. How did the sector fare in the last year, 2023, and how does it position them for the upcoming 2024? Well, Ashmit, uh, the insurance regulator IRDAI has released its annual report and it throws some very interesting numbers and facts as far as the sector in 2023 is concerned. I'll start with the health of life insurance companies and the total benefits which the sector paid to its policyholders. That number stands at about 5 lakh crore for 2023. This was 64% of the total net premium collected by the industry. But as far as the increase over previous year is concerned, the total surrender value paid by life insurance companies, that increased by 25% as far as the previous year is concerned. 
Now let's speak about the death claims uh, paid by life insurance companies. A total of 10.6 lakh policies were settled as claims out of the total 10.76 lakh policies. In terms of amount, life insurance companies uh, settled claims for 28,611 crore rupees as compared to 30,000 216 crore rupees. Uh, as far as uh, the life insurance companies and death claims are concerned, under the group business, the total policies that were settled, that stood at 12.4 lakh crore rupees versus 12.48 lakh crore rupees which were received. In terms of amount, the total amount settled under group policies was 17,178 crore rupees versus 17,769 crore rupees. Now let's speak about general insurance companies and a very interesting number here. The total underwriting loss made by all general insurance companies put together was about 32,797 crore rupees and surprisingly 77% of the losses came from just four PSU general insurance companies. There's another report on uh, insurance penetration from Swiss Re Sigma. Life insurance penetration in 2023, that uh, dropped to 3% versus 3.2% in the previous year. General insurance penetration remained constant at 1%. As far as insurance density is concerned, uh, 2023, the insurance density stood at $92 versus $91 in the previous year. The global density still is far away at about $853. Right, Yash, thanks a lot for that update. Let's move ahead now. Nationwide protests by truck and bus associations against a higher jail term for hit and run offences under the revised criminal law has entered day two. This has impacted the supply of fuel across several parts. Union Home Secretary Ajay Bhalla will be chairing a meeting of the All India Transport Congress later this evening. Truckers are claiming that the rules are considered one sided and may lead to unjust punishment. Rashna Dhanrajani gets us the latest from Mumbai. What you're seeing behind me is a massive queue of uh, extremely disappointed and not very pleased Mumbaikas who've been waiting in the queue for about 60 minutes to get their turn to fill up the tanks of their vehicles. Petrol pump pe do gaya tha, dharavi mein do tin petrol pump pe petrol nahi tha. Tabhi jaakar yaha aya hu, yaha aane ke baad aadha ghanta line lagaya hu. Now this comes in as all the other petrol pumps in the vicinity have started running dry with no sh with no stock left of petrol or diesel. Now the reason why this particular petrol pump in Matunga has any stock left is because of this one tanker that was allowed to be brought in this morning. This was especially escorted by police officials, a police van and head of the petrol pump association. Hey, today evening, I think most of the petrol pumps will run dry. By today evening. All the Bombay petrol pumps will run dry. If somebody has taken product yesterday, 20 kilo, then all people will going there to rush to fill the petrol. So that also will go dry. The shortage around the city is due to, of course, the truck driver protest that's on its day two today. Uh, it is supposed to be a three-day protest, but because there's no certainty or any assurance coming from anywhere, the protest is expected to go on for a little bit longer than just three days. This is Rashmat Rajani in Mumbai. The union budget is less than 30 days away. What is your wish list for the finance minister? Presenting the CNBC TV18 budget ballot box coming to a hot spot near you. We will be placing these ballot boxes at popular public spots like malls, colleges, theatres and others across major cities. We will also be asking the newsmakers who drop into our studios for their budget wish list. So come join us and tell us what is your top budget wish list from the finance minister. Drop your wish list at the CNBC TV18 budget ballot box near you. We will compile them and present it to the finance minister before she presents the union budget. And well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Business 360. More news and updates will continue right here on CNBC TV18.